You know, Matthew 16, 18, and 19, again, I say to you, or Peter, and on this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not. You're getting that? I will. The gates of hell will not prevail against it. And I will, what's it say? Give you the keys to the kingdom. And whatever you bind in the name of Jesus, you're getting this? Whatever you say is illegal will be illegal. It shall already have been illegal. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. We are God's enforcers. We are God's enforcers in the earth for his will to be done. I remember years ago um, talking to some intercessors in the Philippines. And they, they were just as strange as we are. And, you know, they were telling me... Uh, that God had told them to get a list of the violent storms that would come against the Philippines and legislate in the heavens that none of them would hit the Philippines, and none did. You know, they went through the A to Z. I, you know, some years we go through the complete alphabet, right? But we need some people that will legislate against that. We need some people that will say no to that, amen? Amen. We have authority over that in the name of Jesus. One of the roles of the prophets that we don't quite understand or we don't move into, the manifestations of the prophet, you know, completely are in the Old and the New Testament. Some people say, well, you know, the Old Testament prophets had more power. The Lord said to me one day, I never give any less gift, any lesser gift. And it changed my whole authority structure because I no longer limited myself to what I saw just in the New Testament. I understood that as a prophet of God, my role was to change governments, that they should know, like, like it says in the Word of God, when Naaman the Syrian came, the prophet said, that they may know that there is a prophet in Israel. They should know. There's a prophet in your town. Oh, come on. Is there a psychic in your town? Is there a medium in your town? They should know there's a prophet of God. We have let the psychics and mediums take our place. But the times, they are a-changing. Yeah. <laughs> the Lord is giving us a boldness. There's a new authority that we have and that we understand. You know, as so we met at the Reformation Prayer Network this year, and, and Tom uh, Sleater is here, and he can say that, you know, the Lord began to speak to me that as prophets, many times we have decreed what is there in the judgment realm? Okay, in other words, we deserve this judgment. What is there? But we are to prophesy as prophets from the heavens down. But what does God say, and how do we change it? You're getting this? This is true understanding. We are to call to bring the will of God. Are you with me? Come on, everybody. Are you with me? The will of God from heaven to earth. So therefore, being called to do that, we need to get the strategy of God. We're so tactical. Come on, we keep doing things that have been done over and over and over, but we need to grab a hold of the revelation of God. We need to get into the heavenlies. We need to listen to what God is saying in heaven, seated at the right hand of the Father, not what the devil says we deserve. Stop listening to the accuser of the brethren. Listen to God in heaven. Amen? So we began to understand that God wanted us to do great things. So what God is going to anoint you, and let me say this, as you're here at this turnaround moment, is to have a strategy. I was sitting down, and one of the things we've been doing is uh, I have been meeting with prophets from continents, and we've been meeting with prophets from Latin America. We met at Cartagena, went to Costa Rica. Uh, we'll be meeting with 
uh, prophets in Dubai coming up. And so we have been uh, saying, you know, what is God saying? What authority structure do we have? You know, you, you, get, you get a group together that have great authority in the heavens. You can change things. When we did our global prophetic consultation, we had uh, uh, it, we did a global prophetic summit in in November, and then we did a closed consultation before that for prophets. And as we we got together in the heavens, I remember Bishop Joseph Garlington got up. Wow! And he stood standing with Langton Godsey, a top apostle from Zimbabwe. And then we had Marco Barrientos. I don't know if you know who Marco is, but he's like, I'd say, way up as number one in Latin America as a worship leader, a father. So we started mixing this anointing, and all of a sudden, the Lord gave me a word. I am going to pull Mugabe in Zimbabwe out of his office. And it's going to be a suddenly... I'm going to do it. It's going to be sooner than later. And while we were decreeing with all these African leaders and leaders from around the world, somebody Googled Zimbabwe and said, the tanks are rolling into Harare as we are speaking. It started changing. Now that's results. And that's a turnaround. I prophesy and I decree to you in this suddenly moment that things we have labored over for years and years and years. We haven't seen the change. The enemy is mocking us to our face. Every time we turn on the news, it seems as if there's a mocking spirit saying how impotent we have been. But I want to say to you, there's a new marshal in town. There's a new sheriff in town. The people of Christ understand our authority. Can you feel it? Amen. This is the turnaround season. The Holy Spirit was reminding me right after 9-11 that we did a conference in Boise, Idaho. I mean, just that next week, and somehow people, you couldn't get on airplanes, but people were driving in from everywhere. And Dutch got up, and he started to prophesy about seeing an angel. And the angel was filling his mouth full of the wind of God. You remember this, Dutch? And, you know, if you want to say more about it, please do. But blowing upon, like, small communities and different parts of America. And you know how the devil would try to stop the fire of God that came there. But all of a sudden, there was another one that came and another one and another one until it was so many it couldn't be put out. And God is doing it now. Who? Yeah. Yeah. God is raising up a new breed of young firebrands, burning ones, such as we have never seen. Not with the Whitfields, not with the Wesleys. There's something new coming. There's something that has fallen. There's a generation that has awakened. And even though maybe it looks like we can't see them quite yet, because they were born in the mangers of a rural community, maybe with 2,000 people or 5,000 people or whatever, God is on the move in America. And God is awakening not only America, but he is awakening the nations of the earth. Come on, put your hands together. Yes. Yes.